I bid you all good morning, good evening, and good night wherever you may be watching this transmission. It is I, Mike Martins. Thanks for joining me, guys. And we got this from two hours ago. Uh, city of Vancouver at risk of bankruptcy, says Mayor. The city of Vancouver is headed towards bankruptcy. And I told you guys, they're going to add a city tax sometime, like a city tax for a city. So you're going to have your provincial sales tax, your government sales tax, your GST, your PST, and you're going to have your city tax. So your city tax will be an added value tax within the parameters of the city to help keep it afloat and to help all these these major uh, things that the city's doing for everybody afloat, right? Well, here's the deal. Now, we're going to play connect the dots or connect the articles in to find out why the city is at risk of bankruptcy. A lot of these I've read already on the channel. And let's start with this one. Canada wants more Chinese students, tourists, immigration minister says. So Canada has been pumping in 500,000 Chinese per year. Canada wants to compete for Chinese workers, students, and lucrative tourist business. Now, what happens with that is we'll get into the other articles that chain mail with this one so you can get to the, what, where it's happening right now. What's happening is when more money comes into a certain area, the locals in that area just cannot afford to can't afford to keep up with that. So a lot of people send me um, uh, messages from, from Canada Immigration. Look, there's like hardly any immigrants coming in from China. That's the Can Canadian website. That's what they want you to see. Go outside and open your eyes in a Canadian major city and see what's happening. So that's what's happening. So the, Canada is basically selling out to the highest bidder, right? And then, then employment gets hit. BC Mine... Uh, B BC mine, the biggest mine in BC, by the way, coal mine, to hire only Chinese temporary workers for years. They do not hire Canadian workers, but they do use our Canadian healthcare system if they need, if they get hurt. So they do not hire, and you must speak fluent Mandarin to work at the mine. Vancouver has trim transformed by Chinese immigrants. So what's happening? Well. You see Lamborghinis, Ferraris, Rolls Royce, Austin Martins, among other vehicles. Showroom floor cars all over the streets of Vancouver. While the locals that actually built the infrastructure and that are homeless now have to get out because they don't belong there anymore. And what did that bring when we brought in more foreign money, more foreign investing? Canada would be in a recession without money laundering. $200 billion laundered in Canada from the, from 2011 to 2015. Everybody said the housing market in, in, in Vancouver was going to crash after the 2010 Olympics. Man, were they ever wrong. That thing went through the room, to the moon. Yep. Uh, Canadian estimated money laundering by province. There it is by province in the, in the billions. And so when you start introducing money from outside into an economy, it actually boosts the economy it uh assets start to soar like housing 1.2 million dollars for a teardown in vancouver that's nice you know family can't get by back in the day people would buy those old teardowns that were built around world war one world no world war two is too late world war one ish area because they would buy those homes to get by and then eventually buy something bigger in the city or on the outskirts of the city but those average wage homes are now in the high millions So what happened was, so what happened was now, this is very, very interesting, okay? Um, this is very interesting. Sorry, I just people talking to me here in the background. People keep saying, oh, people from all over the world come and spend money in, 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 in Canada. Nope. They deported. Like 40,000 Portuguese from Ontario, 2016, 2017, and 2018. A lot of Portuguese with kids that born and raised in Canada and they own their homes free and clear. They deported them. 40, 40,000. They, they don't belong in Canada anymore. So that's fine. Okay. okay. And uh, it's not everybody from the world coming to spend money in Canada. I, I could guarantee it's from China. I don't see any Japanese people coming to Canada in their right minds will come to Canada and spend money. Even people from Germany, people from anywhere in their right... Well, that's Europe. Europe Europe is pretty much exempt from coming into Canada. And uh, you, you need to fill out this much paperwork and pay a lot of money if you want to come into Canada from Europe. So, City of Vancouver now defines $33,702 rent as affordable housing. So, there it is there. In 2018, the City of Vancouver has changed the definition for, for profit affordable rental housing. 
So there it is. Uh, affordable rental housing in the city by the city standards is $3,702. Uh, that's the rent, affordable rent. Now, why is that? Why? Because they want people, doctors and people in the public service or the public sector to be able to stay in the city. This way, people that need affordable housing realistically will just get out of town, just get the hell out. If you can't afford 3702 a month, you can't afford affordable housing in Vancouver. And that's what it is. They set that up purposely. So people in the public, like doctors, plastic surgeons, radiologists, everybody. And then... Aboriginals and whites leaving Metro Vancouver from all over the world. Aboriginals and whites leaving Metro Vancouver for other regions of BC, particularly to live in the Fraser Valley, Vancouver Island, and Okanagan, according to StatsCan. So there it is. A lot of people, tens of thousands, and it's been happening for years now. I'm one of those statistics. I left the big city. And now the big city is filing for bankruptcy. So when people keep sending me messages saying, oh, people immigrate here from all over the world, the people that bring money, the Australians don't come here and bring money the 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 russians don't come to canada to bring money nobody comes in here to bring money the only people that bring in big cash is who who is dying to leave their country who is wanting to leave their country fast and which countries are dependent on more money canada australia uk and new zealand western united states from Seattle all the way to the bottom, they completely sold out. All the way to uh, San Diego, completely sold out their country. So here it is. COVID, uh, so, oh, I almost said it. Uh, Vancouver at the risk of bankruptcy. So how does this fit in with um, Chinese immigration? Well, when you push out these people that actually pay taxes from their paycheck and actually pay taxes through the nose, when they leave... How are they going to subsidize? And I've been saying this for years. How are these cities going to subsidize their bills? Well, they'll just raise property taxes. Do you know how many houses in Vancouver, empty homes or empty condos, have not paid property taxes for up to now three, four years now? There's actually quite a bit. So there's a lot that's happening, guys. Uh, with, with was it 90, uh, 70, 80, 90,000 empty homes across uh, the lower main, well, Vancouver area? It goes to tell you that Vancouver is not for locals. But the problem is the people that have now moved into Vancouver, they need to start paying taxes because the city is going bankrupt because the people that did pay taxes, uh, the uh, the lower middle class and, and the working poor and the people that uh, and the minimum minimum wage workers that pay through the nose to support the infrastructure that's being transformed by Chinese immigrants. Well, you're starting to see a big balance of shift here. Now, something needs to be fixed real fast. No, nothing needs to be fixed. It's it's done. It's 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 in the ground. So there it is. City of Vancouver. So here it goes. The city of Vancouver is on risk of going bankrupt, says mayor, citing a recent poll showing that more than half property owner owners are not expecting to pay full property taxes this year of COVID. Financial woes would take hold. Well, if you had a lot of average wage workers, if a majority of Vancouver was made up of average wage earners, average, not minimum, average wage earners, then they'll own average wage homes and they'll be paying their average wage property taxes. In a press release issued on Sunday afternoon, Mayor Kennedy Stewart said his earlier claim that the city will lose $189 million in revenue and fee shortfalls 2020 could be as much as $325 million short of the mark. The city has already laid off 1,500 workers. Remember, uh, I think, well, I hope, hopefully they, they lay, start laying off HR workers because you have 40, 50 people working on the ground, 400 HR workers in the middle. Important, learn English. If 25% of homeowners end up defaulting on their property taxes, we could shed up to an additional $325 million in revenues, uh, Stewart says. Losing more than half a billion dollars in operating funds in 2020 would devastate the city's financial position, forcing us to liquefy assets and exhaust every reserve fund we have just to avoid insolvency. And who's going to buy those assets? Canada would be in a recession if it wasn't for money laundering. Who's bringing in the money laundering? Okay, it's not the Chinese, guys. You got me. I'll tell you who it is. It's the Russians. Everywhere you go in Vancouver, it's full of Russians. It's Russians everywhere. Anyways, so yeah. Keep, keep up the good work there, eh? Yeah. So sell out the country, and then now no one's paying their property. Yeah. 
You know how many units there, empty units, are not paying their property tax? So who's going to buy it? Who's going to buy up the city's? Uh, who's going to buy up the city's water company? Who's going to buy up all the big ones? I could tell you who. China. Property taxes make up of the bulk city's revenues, eight hundred and seventy-four million in twenty nineteen. Stewart said the research co polling commissioned by his office found a quarter of property owners would not be able to pay more than half of their property tax owned in twenty twenty, and that six percent were expecting to pay anything at all. Hmm, I wonder who that 6% is. The poll also found that 68% of Vancouver homeowners did not pay their full, mor a full mortgage on April 1st, and that 55% were not expecting to make their full mortgage payment on, on May 1st. So these government bailouts that the government's helping people with to pay off their debt and stuff, if it would be nice, it would be very nice if people were average wage earners that own these homes, because then the, the, the bailouts that the government's sending free money to everybody, that would actually help out. But people are more worried, so they're buying food. According to the Canadian Bankers Association, over 500,000 Canadians have asked for mortgage deferrals in the wake of COVID crisis. This comes after banks increasing interest rates. The research company survey also found Vancouver renters were being hit hard, with 30% not able to make their full April rents and 63% not expecting to make full rent in May. Over 1 million Canadians have so far applied for the federal government's $2,000 a month Covey emergency benefits. The survey found that 46% of those living in the city either lost their jobs or experienced a reduction in hours. This has led to half of households reporting on all over decreased decreased in income with 24% experiencing a significant decrease. The research is clear. The city's finances are going to be negative, negatively affected by COVID due to the lost revenues and hard-hit homeowners defaulting on their uh, property taxes, Kennedy said. So, Mike, these are a lot of Canadians defaulting on these mortgages. What are you talking about? Well, a lot of them bought through FOMO. A lot of them listened to the real estate agents. If you don't buy now... You're never going to own anything. Where are those guys now, eh? Should be uh, sitting in a, should, should be getting class action lawsuit against those guys. Yeah, a big class action lawsuit. It's illegal for Vancouver and other governments to run deficits. So the only way we could stay afloat is with the help of federal and provincial governments. Raise the taxes, man. Otherwise, local governments will be forced to take drastic measures that hurt residents and businesses and significantly slow any post-pandemic uh, economic recovery. So here's the deal. If federal government uh, bails out Vancouver, that means... So then Vancouver becomes like a federalized city then. It can't keep up on its own. And... Uh, funded by the federal federal government like shanghai 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 is run like that too shanghai, big big cities in china are run like that it's like federal government uh, uh communist party run right according to the cities financial records the city overall financial position improved by 300 million in 2019 with accumulated surplus totaling 7.9 billion the city is carrying 1 billion in debt Last year, uh, received an extra $40 million in property tax as payments from developers plunge. City expenses have climbed over $300 million uh, a year between 2015 and 2019. The city has $1.28 billion in reserves, including $146 million set aside for catastrophic events. Oh, they have $146 million for catastrophic events. Well, that's going to fix four homes in Vancouver. Last week, Mayor Stewart called the provincial government to give the city $200 million. The online survey was conducted by Research Co. between April 9th and 10th and 20. The results of employed residents are based on a sample of 421 residents. The results from homeowners are based on a sample of 278 Vancouver residents. And the results were based on a sample of 301 Vancouver residents. So we realistically don't know. But what happened was I said, who's going to fund the people here that are leaving these major cities and mass exodusing? And you have more and more empty units across these major cities because they're and owned how do you how do you balance that you can't there's got to be because look is then let's say that one guy that owns 200 units in vancouver and he's never been to canada he lives in china he's never been to canada but he owns 200 units he bought in shanghai in shanghai they have these big plastic towers and you could buy a condo in vancouver without even they weren't even uh, uh, uh selling them in vancouver because people in vancouver couldn't afford to buy them so what do you do now? One person owns 200 units. Multiply that by three people. 
That's 600 people that, uh, that could have been paying taxes, local taxes that could have been paying towards the infrastructure, right? Potentially paying property taxes and other stuff too. That's 600 people, right? So uh, that's a lot of that's a that's a lot of bread, right? So when you look at it, the big picture, you start off by bringing in more, uh, selling out to wealthy investors, then allowing them to run their own business and buying out our own businesses and not hiring our own people, transforming our cities into what uh, other countries are now, and uh, making sure the money laundering continues because we would be in a recession without money laundering. And the city now defines 3702 rent as affordable housing. They do this on purpose so the people that need affordable housing, if they could pay that, they could stay in the city. And that's doctors, plastic surgeons, people that work like uh, big important people for the city because they don't want to commute two hours to the city to come and work. So they do that. So the people that do need affordable housing that, that are in a sector that's much needed, right, like a, a garbage man or something or somebody working for the city, that gets that – gets, that gets, uh, they have to tr they have to uh, commute, and then with everybody that actually pays taxes in the tens of thousands and twenty and thirty thousands per year leaving, city's gonna go bankrupt. How are they gonna fund their deficits? I've been talking about this for years. They're gonna implement the city tax. If the federal and and then provincial governments step in, now we're paying me and merit my federal tax dollars that I've paid. Now is paying for the city of Vancouver that I left. Because I didn't want any part of it. Comment below. Let me know what you guys think. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and follow me. And we could follow together what is going on. Don't forget to uh, sign up for trends in the housing market. Uh, trends in the housing market. And uh, we could see what's going on. And you could call in on the show and tell us what's on your mind. So, city is going bankrupt. I wonder why. And don't forget to visit to visit this video, guys. It's actually very, very popular. It's been on fire lately, the last day or two. Uh, it's under videos here. It's not even under my... Go under videos here, guys. Watch this one. Right here. Unacceptable. Vancouver seniors choosing to take their own lives uh, rather than go homeless. So people that invested into the infrastructure are basically uh, not part of the system anymore. Or they, they, they are being probably... They're being told to skedaddle move along so let me know what you guys think should the rest of the country pay off vancouver now for defaulting and then when they're uh selling their condos and stuff they don't even present them in vancouver for sale they go to shanghai and, and put this plastic building in, in 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 a big showroom and show people what they could buy in vancouver and make fun of us because the locals can't afford to buy condos because the locals aren't dumb to buy garbage for a million dollar condo. Garbage. Let me know what you guys think. Comment below.